Welcome to worship at First St. Andrews on this Sunday, Trinity Sunday, May the 30th, 2021. Welcome. Let me announce the second gnosis of our annual congregational meeting, which will happen today after service at 1 p.m. by Zoom. We acknowledge that First St. Andrew's United Church is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapiwak, and Attawandaran peoples, on lands connected with the London Township and Sambra Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. We value a close relationship with the members of the local Chippewa, Oneida, and Muncie Delaware nations, as well as the urban indigenous population. This land continues to be home to diverse indigenous peoples, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land. We value the important historical and contemporary contributions to our society of the original peoples of Turtle Island. <laughs> Today we light this candle 
in the name of our tri triune God, three in one and one in three.
I weave this day upon my way the joy of one empowering. I weave this day the holy ray of love that's overpowering. Let us pray. This day I bind around me the power of the sacred three, God's arms to lift and guide me, embrace, affirm, and bind me within the Trinity. This day I bind around me the power of the sacred three, Christ's heart to love and claim me, delight, enfold, and hold me within the Trinity. This day I bind around me the power of the sacred three, the Spirit's inner sight and power to hold me this and every hour within the Trinity. In the triune name of the triune God, we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today, Trinity Sunday, is the passage of which tells of Nicodemus's visit to Jesus. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? 
Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, You are a teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe them, how then can I tell you about heavenly things? No one who has ascended into heaven except one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, did God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. For the word of God in Scripture, among us and within us, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Triune God, Holy One, whose word is enclosed in Scripture among us and within us, bless the preaching of this word in your holy name. Amen. There is a feeling of great excitement within this community, a, a sense of new life for which we wish to thank the members of our search committee. There is a fresh breeze blowing through this sacred place. There, there is an eager anticipation that will carry us forward beyond these days of lockdown due to COVID. It is because of the anticipated call of the Reverend Lawrence, uh, Joshua Lawrence, 
and his family coming to First St. First Andrews, the beginning of their ministry among us. It is my plan to contact him as soon as we complete our congregational meeting this, uh, this afternoon and welcome him to the Antler River Shed Water Shed region and to the United Church of Canada, as well as to First St. Andrews. In the meanwhile, I feel the winds of God blowing through the sails of First St. Andrews, even despite our lockdown due to COVID. It is Trinity Sunday, not a particularly well ce celebrated Sunday in the Reformed Church, but one that provides us with the opportunity to address that we are a Trinitarian people of a triune God. Our gospel lesson for today from John's Gospel is the story of Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus at night. Quite apart from John's intention to move us from darkness to light, from not understanding or misunderstanding to understanding. Both Jesus and Nicodemus carry on their conversations with one another at what appears to be at cross purposes. Jesus answers Nicodemus's questions in a vague and roundabout fashion that reminds us, at least it reminds me, of the difficulty of language, especially the English language. There is a language that explains and a language that declares there is a language that proves and a language that prescribes. There is a language that dictates and a language that describes. There is a legal language that is performative. So it, so it should not be surprising to us that Nicodemus does not get what Jesus intends to say. Sometimes we don't get it either. As Rogers and Hammerstein say of love in The Sound of Music, who who can explain it? Who can tell you why? Fools give you reasons. Wise men never try. It is much the same with this doctrine of the Trinity and of our triune God. So on this last Sunday of our Legacy Month, we honor those who have donated much of their lives 
and of their wealth to this great congregation. They will be honored by a leaf on the Proudfoot tree in our atrium in the presence of family members on September 26 by our new minister, Joshua Lawrence. Those still living who have donated a large portion of their lives to First St. Andrews will be honored on a special service on October the 17th by the presentation of plaques. We are a Trinitarian people who love God, who love God's creation, who love Jesus and all peoples, and who love the Spirit, and whose lives by our very baptism are dedicated to love and to service. William Platcher, professor of religion and philosophy at Wabush College in Indiana, notes in his little book, The Triune God, an essay in post-liberal theology, that while there is no doctrine of the Trinity to be found in the New Testament, Nonetheless, a threefold way of thinking about dog, God was deeply embedded in Christian thought from the very beginning. Long before the Church worked out its theological understanding of the Trinity, those who wrote the New Testament employed a language that included these three elements. We have the baptismal form formula at the end of Matthew. Go, therefore, and baptize all nations, making them disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We also have Paul's benediction at the end of his let second letter to the, to, to the church at Corinth. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Or yet again, we have Paul's contrast of variety and oneness of gifts in his first letter to the church at Corinth. Now, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them, in everyone. Platcher goes on to say that while we encounter Jesus, or when the Holy Spirit enters our lives, there is no other God behind them. That God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are mysteriously and uniquely one. One. Several years ago, I sat in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin, Ireland, listening to an organ recital by Eric Sweeney 
playing his own composition of St. Patrick's Mass. And thinking about St. Patrick and his use of the little shamrock to explain this triune God to the Irish people. Three leaves, one plant. There are many other metaphors that we use to explain this mystery, but it, but it takes us back to the dilemma of language and to its limitations. Frederick Beekner, writing in Wishful Thinking, comments that the much maligned doctrine of the Trinity is an assertion that appearances to the contrary notwithstanding, there is only one God. Beekner says that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit mean the mystery that is beyond us, the mystery that is among us, that the mystery within us are all the same, the mystery. That the Trinity is a way of saying something about us and the way we experience God, much in the same way that we respond to our Scripture reading. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us. And if that idea that God is both three and one seems far-fetched and bewildering and even confusing, then look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror. There you will see the interior life known only to yourself. All your desires, all your secrets, all your little fears, all your fantasies. That's God the Father. Then you see your face staring at you, back at you from the mirror, your shining eyes, your crooked nose, your freckled face, your wide or narrow mouth, your ready smile, or your frown your human face will tell something of the generations that have preceded you, and all of which, which reflect to some degree that inner life. That's the sun. Finally, there is that invisible power which we all possess to communicate our inner life, waiting to be discovered or revealed. That's the Holy Spirit. Years ago, Hubert Herbert Dreskel O'Dreskel explained the Trinian, Trinitarian formula that we use in baptism by saying that each human being is a unique creation. No one carries our DNA. 
No one possesses our fingerprints. No one possesses our unique personality. We are, in fact, a virginal creation. Therefore, in the name of the Father. But we're not alone. We are born into families with moms and dads, siblings, grandparents. We are born into faith families, into ethnic families, into cultural communities, into a multicultural society. Therefore, in the name of the Son, we are always joined, also joined in a wondrous way to all of God's creation, to all living things in loving and creative ways by poetry, by drama, by music, by arts, by our chemical makeup, by our psychological hang-ups. Therefore, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit. Such a Trinitarian formula is, is not some magical incantation, some abracadabra, but a wondrous declaration of all that we are, of all that we might yet become as children of this living God, born, to be sure, of the flesh, but also born of the Spirit. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and Holy One, we give you thanks on this Trinity Sunday for the beauty of nature in this season of springtime. For gray-eyed dawn and starlit night, for dew-dressed grass 
and sun-drenched light. For mapled hills and geese in flight, we give you thanks, creating God. For families and for families of faith, for the ministry of Jesus and all those who dedicated part of their lives to First St. Andrews as members of the Proudfoot Society. For our new minister, Reverend Joshua Lawrence, and for his family. Travel with them by your spirit from Texas to London, Ontario. Fill them and us with your love that together we may lift up our voices in your praise and our lives in service to you. As Joshua led your people into a new land, into a new understanding of your presence among them, so may Joshua Lawrence lead us into a new appreciation of your triune spirit. We live in a sadly broken world. And so we pray on this day for others, most especially for the people of the Middle East, both Palestinians and Jews. We also pray for the broken society of Syria, and those who are exiled from both their communities and for their, from their country. For the peoples of Africa, the Sudan, Chad, Ethiopia, Nigeria, For every nation, every race, for signs of multicultural grace, for Christ, in whom we see your face, we give you thanks revealing God. All this we pray in and through your name. In the words that Jesus taught us to say and to live by, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever 
and forever. Amen. We come now to the dedication of four benches presented to this congregation by members of this congregation in memory of our former organist and former members. On this Trinity Sunday, the last day of our Legacy Month, we dedicate these four benches in the memory of Laura Swartman, to D.J. and Helen McLeod, and to D.A. and Margaret MacArthur, to Terry Head, to Glenn and Barbara Bain, in the name of the Holy and Triune God, we dedicate these benches for the beauty of this holy space and for the enjoyment of all God's people. Amen. Hello, everyone. I am Jackie Williams, co-chair of the Board of Trustees. My co-chair is Doug Jones. Participating with me now is Steve Elson, chair of First and Andrews Council. As many of you know, the long-term giving committee of the Board of Trustees has launched our new benefactor program, contributors to which have been named members of the Proudfoot Society. Membership of the society is composed of individuals who make a gift of $10,000 or more to the Proudfoot Legacy Trust, either while still living or as a bequest in their will, or if they are longtime continuing members of FSA with 40 or more cumulative years and have served on the executive of one or more of the official board, the session, the Board of Trustees, the Church Council, or our UCW. During each of the four Sundays in May, we will announce a group of church members who have fulfilled one or more of these criteria. As we are unable to celebrate together due to COVID-19, there will be a recognition on October 17th, at which time a plaque that includes the names of all Proudfoot Society inaugural members will be hung on the wall of the atrium at FSA. The following names are inaugural members in the week four group. Glenda Robinson is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First and Andrews United Church. In grateful appreciation for having served on the executive of the United Church Women and for being a continuing member of the church for more than 40 years. Debbie Schramm is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First and Andrews United Church. In grateful appreciation for having served on the executive of the United Church Women and for being a continuing member of the church for more than 40 years. Louise Slater is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First and Andrews United Church. In grateful appreciation for having served on the executive of the United Church Women and for being a continuing member of the church for more than 40 years. Sally Smith is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrews United Church. In grateful appreciation for having served on the executive of the United Church Women and for being a continuing member of the church for more than 40 years. Jean Stewardson is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrews United Church. In grateful appreciation for having served on the executive of the United Church Women and for being a continuing member of the church for more than 40 years. John and Fran Eberhard 
are hereby honored as members of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrew's United Church. In grateful appreciation for John having served as chair of the official board and chair of the board of trustees, and for both Fran and John being continuing members of the church for more than 40 years, and for their generous support of the Proudfoot Legacy Trust at the silver level. Margaret A. and David M. Wardlaw are hereby honored as members of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrew's United Church. For their generous support of the Proudfoot Legacy Trust. Ken and Jean Wright are hereby honored as members of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrew's United Church. In grateful appreciation for Ken having served as church treasurer and for both Ken and Jean being continuing members of the church for more than 40 years and for their generous support of the Proudfoot Legacy Trust. Jean Wunsch is hereby honored as a member of the Proudfoot Society of First St. Andrew's United Church. For her generous support of the Proudfoot Legacy Trust. Your offerings to this great congregation of First St. Andrews will be now received. Let us pray. Maker in whom we live and move, we thank, give you thanks this day for all those who dedicate a portion of their lives to the ministry of this great congregation, who through it give to you, our triune God. Let all the angel throng give glory to God on high, while we on earth repeat our joyful song of thanks. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
May the strength of God uphold us, the love of Jesus Christ enfold us, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our guide, remain and abide with each of us this day and every day. Amen.